everyone, and welcome back to Live Laugh Stuck, previously Jaxta's Homestuck, which is a thing I will probably say for at least a few more episodes. Today we're back to the Building a Positive Community series of Jax Yax. We are going to be jumping into how to have healthy disagreements. A few disclaimers. This is not going to cover every possible way to have healthy disagreements or every aspect of them. I will just be doing my best to cover the basics. Also, this whole discussion is under the assumption that both you and the person you are disagreeing with aren't trolling or otherwise coming to this with bad faith. Bad faith being a tricky situation because I think a lot of us have issues projecting bad faith onto someone we disagree with, maybe with good reason, and there are also people who don't intend to engage with bad faith, but end up doing so. For the purposes of this episode, we will be giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. But remember, there is nothing wrong with muting or blocking or just not engaging with people, especially if you feel they are coming into things with bad intentions, if the disagreement goes circular or otherwise seems like it's going nowhere fast, or if you just can't handle the disagreement. Your mental well-being is what's most important. But let's see if you should even engage with the argument in the first place. Not everything you disagree with has to be argued about, and often it's better to not if you can avoid it. You should start out envisioning the positive outcome you want from the situation, and make sure that outcome isn't simply winning the argument. If you're only focused on winning and not coming to an understanding, or even agreeing to disagree, then that's not an argument you should engage with in the first place. In fact, the goal should be empathy. Are you disagreeing with a headcanon because you want the other person to say you're right, or to prove to your followers you're right, or are you doing it to mutually reach a deeper understanding about a character? You should also try to pick your battles. Is this a one-off irritation that will go away if you don't engage, like a single person having a bad take based on their own experiences? Will arguing make you feel good now, but set a bad precedent or start a chain of discourse, like giving attention to an account with a small follower base for an idea you dislike but wasn't gaining traction? Is what that person's saying harmful and needs to be addressed calmly and with understanding because it could cause issues later, or is it an opinion that shouldn't have any long-term reach? Like, is this person saying something transphobic and is potentially unaware, or is this person just a blatant bigot and should be blocked rather than engaged with? Also, make sure to look beyond your own triggers. I know I have issues when people say things about Dirk I don't agree with, for example, because that's a sensitive subject to me. But because it is, that means I need to stop and reflect and be extra careful not to jump to conclusions or get into arguments with a potentially overly hostile attitude. Also, it's important to note that sometimes disagreements are necessary and shouldn't be avoided. If someone, especially a friend, is doing something that is bothering you and you are too set on avoiding disagreements to bring it up, it will only brew resentment in the long run and make the friendships turn sour and hostile. It's hard, but making sure you have open and honest communication with your friends is essential in maintaining healthy relationships. So you've thought about all that and decided it is worth it to engage, whether because you want a healthy discussion or a healthy relationship or because you think something potentially harmful needs to be addressed and you're prepared to do that with empathy or some other reason. One big part of disagreeing is listening and seeking to understand. Make sure to give the opportunity for them to fully state their case rather than jumping in early. This is essential on a space like Twitter where you're very limited on what you can say in one tweet. So make sure you stop and give them time to respond and listen to what they're trying to say. You should also convey presence and interest, making sure that they understand that you're listening to them and taking in what they're saying. Repeating what they say as you understand it and responding to that, then letting them confirm or clarify is a great way to do that. This also helps you digest what's being said and maybe come to a better understanding instead of jumping to conclusions. After all, you know what they say, to assume makes an ass out of you and me. Right? It's in my head all the time. Make sure to listen to any clarifications they give rather than sticking with what it sounded like they were saying. 
some people just phrase things poorly, especially on Twitter. Okay, you've listened. You're listening. You're envisioning the best outcome even, where both of you coming away feeling satisfied. But you have to talk, right? How do you say what you want to say without accidentally being hostile or otherwise negative? Well, first, take stock of your feelings and own them. While we can't control our initial feelings, we can recognize them and regulate our reactions and what we say based off of them. If you're feeling frustrated or upset, get up and take a little walk before responding. And if the conversation is starting to feel heated, try to de-escalate. You can do that by looking for solutions, not ascribing blame, and trying to find similarities rather than fixating on differences. Using positive language helps this, like I statements, saying I felt X when you did Y, rather than you did Y because of X. This should help you also avoid adding any judgment to what you or the other person is saying, saying what happened rather than why you think it happened. And again, make sure to attack the issue, not the person. There's a huge difference between you said this character sucks because you're homophobic and the reasonings you gave for disliking this character reminded me of some homophobic things that people have said to me or others in the past. If we've remained de-escalated, the latter should foster a more honest and calm conversation where you both can explain why you said and feel the way you said and feel. Along with positive language, Ask positive questions, making sure to try to generate constructive responses so it doesn't turn into you talking at someone rather than with someone. An example, using the previous scenario, could be what led you to X interpretation about this character. This also shows respect for the other person's point of view rather than just making it all about your own. Make sure to also thank them for listening. It feels good to be acknowledged and reminds the other person that this disagreement is a two-way conversation rather than you just saying things at each other. Before you send your message, read through it and make sure it's saying what you want to say. And maybe take another walk or minimize the browser for a bit before reading it over fresh. I realize these are all hard steps to follow on short and quick response sites like Twitter, and that's honestly one of the many failings of Twitter as a platform for communities and social interaction. There is less time to think, less time to respond, less time to read and understand. But giving yourself time to stop and think and wait and respond is still very important and shouldn't be sacrificed to get your thoughts in more quickly. Ultimately, we all make mistakes, so it's fine if you slip up and forget some steps or come off as too aggressive happens and it's something you constantly have to work on as long as you are constantly acknowledging when or if you do make a mistake and coming up to that and still trying to reach an agreement after that or maybe even just admitting like sorry got you hostile I'm going to take a step back for a while so you can give yourself that space away. Also participating in and resolving Twitter arguments can feel nice but if you're not able to respond quickly enough to keep up with it, or if you're not able to respond calmly, letting it go and disengaging is always a good option. Everything I've referenced today will be listed in the show notes below, so feel free to check those sites out for more information. If you have a topic you want me to cover about creating and maintaining positive communities, specifically in regards to the Homestuck fandom, check out my Discord, also linked below, for that and other suggestion boxes. Next week is Christmas, and secular though I may be, I'll be taking the week off. I hope you all enjoy whatever holidays you may celebrate, and for anyone listening who works in customer service, it's almost over. You've almost made it through. As always, thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the new year.